Hey everyone, welcome to another Dim Sum Thursdays. Today I'm making lobako, or in English, it's a radish cake. But in some places you might hear it as turnip cake. But whichever it is, out of all the dim sum menu items, this is probably one of the easiest to make. However, it may require a little bit of patience, which I will show you why later. Okay, so lavaco is made with a radish which looks like this and this is how it looks shredded I use one of these little Thai style peelers which helps julienne the radish but you can also chop it with a knife or use a box grater a box grater would be much quicker but all I have is this and I also have a knife so this is what I used so the way I shred my radish is I have some big and some small which for me is more rustic style which I like and it's the way my mom did it and this is about 800 grams of daikon radish that I've shredded. And then I've got here 70 grams of Chinese sausage. This is pork sausage, and you need pork sausage because it's fattier, so, so make sure you get the pork lap churum. And then I have here a mix of three medium-sized shiitake mushrooms, plus three tablespoons of dried shrimp. What I did was I soaked the mushroom and the shrimp in one cup of boiling water, and here's a water. And you soak it for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And then what you get left over is this water here. It's packed full of flavor. The mushroom flavor, the dry shrimp flavor is all in this cup. One quick tip is once you've soaked your shrimp and your mushrooms, make sure you squeeze them because there's plenty of water inside those mushroom and shrimp. So squeeze it out into this cup, okay? And then here's the glue that holds everything together. This is 160 grams of rice flour. This is how the package looks. Now to my rice flour, I'm going to add 3 tablespoons of cornstarch. So that's 3 tablespoons. Okay, so that's it. I've got most of my ingredients prepped. So now it's time to start get cooking. First things first, I'm going to add my Chinese sausage to a large saucepan on medium heat. At this point, I'm just trying to render out the fat from the Chinese sausage. The pork fat is going to give a lot of flavors to the other ingredients that I add into this pot. Lobak go is essentially a one pot dish, except that I have to steam it in another pot. So maybe it's a two pot dish. But anyways, once a lot of fat has been released from the lap churn, go ahead and add in your mushroom and dry shrimp. And I'm going to cook it while I'm stirring the pot constantly. This way, none of the ingredients get burned because there are a lot of natural sugars in the dried shrimp and sugars added into the lap churn, the Chinese sausage. Okay, so it's been a few minutes so far and I'm still on medium heat and a lot of the moisture has been cooked away from the dried shrimp as well as the mushroom. So here's what to look for, okay? When you see that all the ingredients have dried out and then you hear these little popping sounds and you see bits of little ingredients jumping up and down, you know it's ready to remove and set aside. Okay, it's time to add the raw radish. I didn't wash the pan at all. So all the flavor from the mushroom, the dry shrimp, and the Chinese sausage is still inside that pan. So I'm gonna turn my fire to a medium heat. And remember that mushroom and dry shrimp water? Well, I'm gonna add that into the pan right now. And don't worry if it looks like there's not enough water inside the pot. Radish is made of 95% water. Trust me, I looked it up in Google. It's not something that I know offhand, but go ahead and just mix the bottom around for about three minutes just until you see some water being drawn out from the raw radish. Okay, now that there's a small pool of water on the bottom of the pan, I feel safe to put on a lid and just let the radish cook down some more and release its water. Okay, so now that my shredded radish is steaming now, I'm gonna give you a quick pro tip about the right radish for your labaco. Choose the heaviest one that you can find because it means that there's more water inside it. I only added a little bit of water, which is from the mushroom and the dry shrimp into the radish. So the radish is also gonna give off a lot of water, which we're gonna use again later to make our labaco even better. So remember, pick a radish that is heavy. Okay, so it's been about five minutes on medium heat. And I can see that my radish has completely wilted down and looks slightly translucent. It's a nice little pool of liquid on the bottom of the pan. So it's time to strain the radish because we're going to still use this liquid to flavor our lobaco. Just have a bowl and strainer set up and just gently squeeze out whatever liquids that's still inside the radish. And I'm also going to keep the liquids that are inside the pot. 
Okay, so I squeezed out as much liquid as I possibly could. Uh, you don't have to be too paranoid. Just make sure that it's slightly dry and should be fine. So as I said, I'm gonna keep the water and set it aside. But first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my lap churn, my dry shrimp and my mushroom back into the radish. At this point, the fire is off. All that I'm doing right now is just combining the ingredients thoroughly. So right now I'm back to my rice flour and cornstarch mix. I only had about a cup of liquid left from the cooking. So I had to add half a cup of just plain drinking water for a total of one and a half cup of liquids. So my radish liquid is slightly cooler. I'm gonna add it into my flour mixture just slowly. Just drizzle it in at first and then mix it in and then go ahead and add rest of the liquid slowly. And when you see no lumps at all, then it's ready to be put back into the pot. So in goes my rice flour batter. And I also like to get my spatula involved just to be a little more tidy. And remember, the fire is off. Right now, it's time to add the seasonings. This is one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon MSG. That's right, folks, MSG. Hey, listen. This is a dim sum style lobako recipe, so that's why there is MSG. So most Asian moms do not use MSG for cooking at all, even for lobako. But since this is a dim sum style lobako recipe, there's gotta be MSG. But hey, if you don't like it, you can leave it out. No problems at all. This is one teaspoon sugar. This is one teaspoon ground white pepper. And finally, three tablespoons of cooking oil. Okay, so now that I have all my seasonings inside the pot, it's time to switch on the heat to a medium low and just keep stirring the pot. This part's gonna take pretty quick. For me, it takes about three minutes to cook this off. What you're looking for is for the ingredients to combine with the flour and water mixture. You're gonna feel it. While you're mixing, everything is gonna feel kind of sticky and very heavy on your spatula. And I recommend keep stirring your pot around. This way the flour does not settle in one area and just cook into some kind of pasty glue. So keep stirring because this is very important. And before you know it, your mixture can get overcooked. So be careful and pay attention to how the ingredients look. The way I tell is, if it resembles a very thick, creamy spaghetti carbonara, then that's it. Switch off the heat. It's time to put it into a pan and get ready for steaming. Okay, so this is the pan that I'll be using to steam my lobaco. It is a nine inch round cake pan. You can use a square one if you want, or you can even use a casserole dish. Uh, doesn't really matter. But with this nine inch cake pan, my lobaco is gonna be about two inches to two and a half inches high. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna oil the bottom of the pan as well as the sides. This way, after I'm finished cooking my lobaco, it'll be easier for me to remove it. Now I'm gonna fill my pan, making sure that there are no large air pockets or bubbles. And then just move out the top. And I like to tap my pan on the tabletop for a few times just to take out any large air bubbles. You're gonna steam this lobaco for about 50 minutes, so make sure that your pot has plenty of water. And at the 40 minute mark, I'm gonna show you how to check if your lobaco is cooked or not. You take a chopstick and you put it into the center of the lobaco, and it looks just a little bit moist then you know that your lobaco is almost ready. Just like this one is. As you can see, my chopstick is just a little bit moist. So this lobaco is ready, but I'm just gonna steam it for another two to three minutes. Okay, so if you remember in the beginning of the video, I told you that lobaco requires just a little bit of patience. Well, I lied. It requires a lot. I recommend leaving your lobaco on the countertop for at least overnight. The reason why is you want to give the lobaco time to meld with all the flavors. This is something that my mom does. So it is a tradition for me. And this is also something that Hong Kong dim sum restaurants do as well. So leave it overnight. And then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna show you how to pan fry it. But I have to stick my lobaco inside the refrigerator because if I don't, my cats will go crazy. All right, so here's my lobako. Check it out. It's studded with all the yummy goodness, the lap churn, the shiitake mushroom, and the dried shrimp. Traditional way to eat lobako is to pan fry. 
I never eaten it like this before. Uh, I can imagine that it's not as tasty as pan frying it. So cut it up into large squares, which is the traditional way of eating labaco. And I would use a well seasoned pan to pan fry this. So I will use a well seasoned wok. But if you don't have one, no worries, use a non-stick pan. I also recommend cooking it at a medium low heat. This way it won't burn too fast. And I would always use the back of my spatula to push it down into the hot wok just to give it a really nice sear. So I will brown the outside and sometimes I'll even go nuts and I'll even burn the outside just a little bit. There's just something about lobaco that burn has a really nice taste. I guess you can call it umami, but whatever you call it, it just tastes awesome. In the dim sum restaurants, Lobaco is always accompanied with oyster sauce. Sometimes the radish and lobaco can be a little bit bitter. The oyster sauce gives it a little bit of a sweetness and savoriness that helps counteract the bitterness of the radish. So it's a great combination. So oyster sauce is always served with lobaco in dim sum restaurants. Now, since I like to eat spicy food, I also like sriracha on my lobaco. It's just a great combination. The sriracha, the oyster sauce, these are just excellent condiments for Lobaco. Okay everyone, if you do like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're watching me for the very first time, please subscribe and hit the bell notification button for new videos. I make new dim sum videos about once every Thursday and I make other cooking videos about once every week as well. So try this recipe out. I know you enjoy it. If you have any questions, do leave comments below. I try to answer all of them. So I hope to see you all again next time. Take care and goodbye.